Yeah, they're high dollar. Right now, they're about $800 a pound. People call them the zombie mushrooms. Some people look for them and never ever find them in their whole life. This is a, a really good environment to find cordyceps in. It's, it's really wet. There's like a little creek right here. There's a lot of moss. Typically, earlier in the summer, you'll find them in the moss. Later in the summer, you might find them growing out of like old logs and things, um, which is more based on the insect than the actual mushroom. You need to learn a little bit about entomology to be really good at finding cordyceps. Um, cordyceps is an entomopathogenic fungi. So entomopathogenic just means like entomo for insects and then pathogenic means just kind of like pathogenic on insects um, where it'll grow in a living insect. It'll take over its nervous system. It'll control the insect and put it in a place where it's good to uh, produce the fruiting body. There's one. Sweet. This is incredible to find because it's entirely invaluable. Like, this can provide so many people with income. This can provide so many people with like a holistic medicine. Um, as long as I take this back to my, my house, take it to the lab within the next couple of days and clone it, so many people can utilize this to bring income for themselves and uh, share as a medicine. So I'll show you guys how to, how to harvest these. All right. Yeah, so this is on a rock. Typically if it's in like, if it's in the ground or like in moss that's on the ground, um, I'll, I'll use my knife or something to dig a hole around it to pull out the bug. But because it's on a rock, it means that the bug is not that far away. It, it controls the bug. It's like you can still think out of your brain, but your nervous system is being controlled by something else. People call them the zombie mushrooms. So typically we see them on sphinx moth pupae here. There we go. Yeah, there's the bug. This is insane. And so like the inside of this bug is completely mummified by mycelium. Yo, I could see spores coming out of there. That's so crazy. Wow, it's just releasing spores right now. It's like something disturbed us. Like we're gonna release all these spores. There's just spores just blowing out of these things. Wow. Yeah, so almost every insect has a cordyceps association. So there's like thousands of different cordyceps species all around the world. Um, and they typically work with like a certain species of insects, but Cordyceps militaris is so successful because it can live on 32 different species of insects. So this is one of the most successful Cordyceps. If the spores come in contact with a moth or in common contact with the larvae of this insect, it'll attach itself to the exoskeleton. It'll go inside, it'll produce like a little energy storage sac called a sclerotia. And from there, when it feels it's, the time is right, It'll grow out and it'll take over all its organs. It'll take over all of its nervous system and it'll control the bug to wiggle. Like sometimes the bugs will be deeper, but it'll make the bug go right in a perfect place where it's like, all right, like we're in this open field. Like I found them on the hill. I found them by the creek. Like it's like, all right, this creek's gonna blow our spores. Or like if I'm at the top of the hill, the spores are gonna go further. So it makes sure that it's like up at the surface, near the surface, and then it'll produce these mushrooms out of it. I found them in North Carolina. I found them in Pennsylvania. I've had people find them in New York. People find them in Virginia all the time, West Virginia. A cordyceps is like a energy tonic um, for the most part. So a lot of people use it for energy. It has a compound called cordycepin that's so similar to adenosine triphosphate or like the cellular energy, um, our cellular energy. And um, it can, it's so similar, the compound, that it can go into our cells and provide us energy on a cellular level. Um, it's also a powerful aphrodisiac. It's great for respiratory health. It can help get more oxygen into your body. So it, it's really good at, uh, at fighting the effects of hypoxia. So if you're at high altitudes and you're like getting shortness of breath, if you take cordyceps, it can really help you to get more oxygen into your body. Um, so those are some of the main factors, but there's a lot more research coming out that shows that it has compounds effective against retroviruses like HIV, AIDS, and malaria. Um, which has incredible potential. So there's a lot more research that needs to be done. Wow, there has to be more cordyceps out here. <laughs>